Today, we're going to talk to Mark Erickson about Redux selectors and how those tie into React and its context and how you select items out of the React context. The React team is actually working on a context selectors API, and I'm trying to find the PR right now. It may have dropped off the front page of the PRs list. So it's trying to be like Redux. Not exactly. There was an RFC submitted about it by the community a couple of years ago, and actually a third-party contributor filed a couple PRs to React. One made the code base, the, the context implementation lazier, he described it, so it actually would have better performance. And he also submitted an actual PR that tried to implement some kind of a context selector API. So if you look at this pull request right here, Andrew Clark is acknowledging that the work in this PR is strongly based off of those two contributor PRs. The status now, as we talk about this, is the PR exists. You can technically build it and try it out but it's very work in progress and experimental. And I, I believe Ander has been trying it some in the internal Facebook builds, but it, I don't think it's turned on in any of the public alphas right now. I, I, I could be wrong about that. The, the interesting thing about now is if you look at the example usage right here, the current implementation is that the selectors you provide cannot do any deriving of data. They can yeah. only return val a sub-value out of what's in context. And the idea is that, that means React can run that really fast during the render phase to determine if anybody else will be affected by this or not. And the idea is that you, if you look at this here, you actually then have to re-extract the field that you care about out of the selector and then do the derivation from there. So the second argument, let's see if I'm understanding this, the second argument there is saying, listen for this for changes, but you're yes. still getting the full context. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And the two reasons are it makes the render pass faster because it's just return a value, compare a value. Yes. And then as Andrew points out at the, the bottom of it, hypothetically, some magic compiler could do that for you automatically someday. Now that's the same hypothetical magic compiler that they've been saying could insert all the use effect dependencies for you automatically. And that compiler really does not exist. I've seen people make like Babel macros and stuff for that kind of thing. So it's not impossible, but realistically speaking, an official tool does not do that yet. The React team has not said, here's an official tool to do that yet. So practically speaking, that does not exist yet. Keeping a very close eye this, I imagine that if context selectors get finalized and put into React 18, we could at least consider maybe trying our React Redux version 6 architecture again, where we do put state in context, yes. read things out later on, especially if we're not dealing with connect, maybe. Then you don't need to use mutable source. Uh, right. But the flip side is that right now, Redux selectors can and will derive values and return them. And this is almost, if you look at, this is really reselect, create selector here. You've got input selector A, input selector B, create selector with those inputs and get the output. Like that exactly maps onto reselect's API, but the steps are separate. Yeah, yeah. And most Redux selectors, if you're going to do memoization and create selector and stuff, they do all those steps inside the one generated selector function. Reselect being a library you can use for Redux to create memoized selectors. Yeah. The reselect library has always been maintained by a guy named Lee Bannard. Reselect itself is not part of Redux. It's just a plain JavaScript library, but it's always been heavily associated with Redux. We recommend it in the docs and 98% of the usage has been with Redux. And reselect works, but its API also has a number of limitations. And the biggest one probably is that a single selector instance has a cache size of one. Yes. Oh, and because they're statically created, you can't derive yeah. them based on the props of the component. And so then your selector, yes, I've had this problem because if multiple components use the same selector, then you've already got a conflict. Exactly. By the way, I, I will point out that actually two weeks ago, I three weeks ago, I wrote a brand new docs page on selector usage. I had one for years called computing derived data, and it wasn't bad, but it needed a lot of updating. And I had written a blog post in 2017 about 
selectors that I usually pointed people to instead. So a few weeks ago, I actually wrote a brand new docs page from scratch, incorporating most of the material from my 2017 post, but with a lot of other information. The reason we have a selector library, a memoizing selector library in the first place is because every time your map state to props or your use selector would get called, it would get called anytime the Redux store updates. At any point in time where the state updates, all of these selector functions are getting called at the same time. And there could be a performance penalty to doing so if they have any computations. And really, there's two different potential performance issues. One is, let's say that inside of your selector, you're doing some very complex transformation logic, hand wave, expensive stuff here. We don't want to do that unless the real inputs to this process have changed. And it's very likely that some other piece of the store is changing on most actions and not this section. Why should we rerun this expensive if the inputs didn't change? The output should be the same. The other issue is both connect and use selector force your component to re-render effectively if you return a new reference. An operation like mapping over an array returns a new reference every time, even if the contents of the array ain't every time. Like, imagine like here we've got a state dot to do. So imagine we have like both a counter app and a to do's app together in one example, and I increment the counter. State dot to do's hasn't changed. None of the two completed flags have changed. But we're going to rerun this. We're going to make a new array with the completed flags. That's going to be a different reference. And now this to do list component is forced to re render, even though none of the data that it cares about actually changed. Yes. Now, I'm assuming a lot of people have this problem in their apps and don't realize it because yeah. I had it happen in an app where I work and it literally. Literally, it was all over the place and it caused the entire app to re-fire re renders all over the place every time like you were typing in an input even because we yep. were running that through Redux and it caused so many problems. This is the thing where anytime I see this, it's so like code smell. It's, oh my gosh, please don't do this. This is horrible. It's going to cause so many problems. The point of using memoized selectors is it's a tiny little cache. Basically, you run it the first time and it saves the inputs and the outputs. If you call it again with the same inputs, it says, oh, I've seen this before. Return the cached output instead of recalculating. I've got some examples in here of how does this work if you call a selector function with the same arguments twice in a row. We, we have a cache hit. We saw the same inputs return the result. If you call it with a different argument, the cache size is only one. It mm -hmm. has to recalculate the result. Then if we go back to the original inputs, that's not what you called it with a minute ago. We have to recalculate again. And the problem you were alluding to a minute ago, say we have some kind of a selector that we're using in a list item component and you're rendering 10 or 100 or 1,000 list items, if they're all using the same function instance, they're probably all calling it with different arguments one after the other. And the selector never has a chance to memoize because every time the inputs are different. The recommended pattern that you can use in here is you can create a unique instance of a selector per component so that each component calls its own unique selector instance with consistent arguments. It was possible to do that with connect and map state. We had to use this funky like map state returns a function instead of an object thing. It's a little easier with hooks because you can just use like use memo or something to do this. But honestly, the, the whole problem space is still unintuitive. Now, there are some other libraries that are either wrappers around reselect or not reselect at all. There's one called reselect, which customizes reselect's behavior so that it has many different instances internally keyed by some ID. If you've got 10 different to-dos, pass in the, the to-do ID as the key, and then component one gets the selector one, component two gets selector two, but it looks like one selector on the outside. I should also note another way to solve this, and it's not a really great solution, is to just store these permutations in the Redux store instead of selecting and then doing logic on your selection, putting them in the store. The problem is now you got to maintain that in your store. And it's exactly. yes. That's part of why we've always recommended for both React and Redux that you should keep the state as minimal as possible and derive as much as possible because it keeps the state simpler, it keeps the update logic simpler, and you're, you're better guaranteed to have consistent output as a result. Yes, yes. Reselect works, but its API clearly has limits. All the way back in February, Reselect has actually been mostly unmaintained for the last couple of years. The guy who's worked on it has been too busy. And I'm not actually the Reselect maintainer. The repo is in our GitHub org. So I've always got like the notifications stuff. And because I work on Redux, keeping an eye on that has always been a, an important thing. I filed this whole big roadmap discussion back in February where I said, we should look at making a Reselect version five. Here's a whole series 
series of problem statements with the current API. What ideas can we as a community come up with to have an improved reselect API? There's some existing PRs that have never been merged that try to tweak things. There's other libraries in the ecosystem that either wrap reselect or do, do their own similar but different behavior. And I even listed a whole bunch of other libraries that oh my do, goodness. Do, do anything selector related at all. So this is a huge problem. It, it, it's, a, it's meaningfully sized. To get some confirmation here, these these are not issues if you're using Redux Toolkit. They are issues. Redux Toolkit actually just re-exports Create Selector just because everyone uses Reselect anyway. You get it without having to add it as a separate dependency. And we do use it internally in a couple of the, the bits of behavior. Are you able to create one per component instance then? Each component instance would have its own selector? That's outside the domain of Redux Toolkit. Where I went with this issue is, look, there's a bunch of widely acknowledged pain points. Here's some areas where we could try to improve the ABI. Here's other tools in the ecosystem that try to solve similar or over your overlapping problems. Hey, what would people like to see? And that mostly silence in response. There's been some comments in here, but this issue has been mostly pretty quiet since I opened it and I haven't had time to go back and pursue this myself. It's interesting because it is such a huge issue. If you want to keep your store small and not have extra data in it, that's essentially compute data that you're mm -hmm. memoizing. And you would need to have a solution like this. And there are other solutions that I've seen, even for React context, there's stuff like Recoil and, and other tools like that that provide a similar solution to this. Yep. There is one other specifically interesting alternative I'll call out here. There's a guy named Daishi Kato, who is just like a one man library making machine. And he just keeps <laughs> cranking out all these nifty little libraries, often based around proxy usage in some way. I believe he's actually now currently a maintainer for some of the Poimendre's organization libraries like Zustant and Vaultio and Jotai. Okay, I've heard of Jotai. I don't know anything about any of those. I think Daishi wrote Vaultio and Jotai himself, and then they got moved into that organization. But he's got a little library called Proxy Memoize, and it's a little bit like Immer in a sense, in that you feed in an object and it tracks how you interact with that object, except that here it's tracking reads mm -hmm. instead of mutations. Here's a classic example of where reselect falls down. Say we want to map over our to-dos array and return just a text field of each of these. Normal immutable updates say that state.todos got changed anytime we flip like a completed flag or something. So if I flip the completed flag, state.todos changes, we're going to recalculate this even though none of the text field changed. That's a problem with reselect right now. Whereas with proxy memoize, it tracks that, okay, you're not just accessing state.todos, but it's like the lowest level that you access is all the individual to-do.txt fields. Oh, he's wrapping the whole state or each piece yeah. of it in a proxy and then he's proxying the proxies. Yeah, that, which, is how Immer, which is how Immer works for the mutations. Oh, interesting. So you can do nested mutations. Yeah. So here, by by seeing that like eventually the last piece that we read is all the individual to-do.txt fields, if I dispatch a toggle to-do action, there's a state.todos, there's a new state, but since none of the text fields change, this memoizes and we still get our same array result as before. I've, I've had my eye on this as an interesting candidate for a while. And so when I wrote this page, you can see I said here, this is worth officially using. Now, it's a newer lib. It's not as battle tested. There are like a couple weird edge cases and it's more magical, but it looks good enough to me to suggest that people be willing to take a look at it, try it out. But having said all that, I also think it's still worth trying to improve reselect, partly because it's so well known and because it's used in Redux Toolkit already, et cetera. Makes sense. Yeah, because it's a solution. So here's the thing is that, cool, proxy memoize is so good, but you can't necessarily just replace what you have. I guess you could just replace it with this. But the other thing is that people already have their existing code bases that have been unit tested and they're already using reselect. So if there's some way to improve that in their current ecosystem, is that where you're going? Yep. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Dude, this is, anytime this guy's using proxies or you've talked about proxies, it's just mind blowing because I never think to do code that way, but it, it makes sense. Like I, I can look at some of the stuff he's done and say after the fact, oh, that kind of makes sense. I just can't come up with any of this stuff myself. Yeah, I almost want to do a video now on proxies just to explain how they work and how this getter is working. Because if it's just yep. the get, it's very easy to do. I did it one time with objects off of objects and do the proxy manually. But it's so much more work to do that than to do it this way. I like this a lot better with, with just proxies in general. The, the API for proxies is really slick for doing what he's doing here, which is getter. But then the sub object is also another proxy with a getter. 
Yeah. There, there's a lot of stuff going on around Redux that you wouldn't necessarily think of at first. And granted, when I say going on, some of this stuff has been sitting here for months and I have no timeline for when there's going to be any forward progress on it. You could see all the different bits and pieces I'm juggling in my head as things that would help make the ecosystem better. Yeah, it's really cool to see because I haven't personally heard as much about Redux lately. And so it's neat to see that there's so much development still going on. There's a lot of problems that are still being solved and Redux is still a performance minded library. Oh, yeah. 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 It's pretty crazy. Thanks for watching this episode. This was definitely an interesting one. I didn't think we'd go in this direction, but I also got a lot of information out of it. And hopefully it better informed your decisions going forward, not just for Redux, but for any application you're building that needs to select stuff out of a state.